Hey Arnold the movie. Eh, too boring. Channel Chasers. Too good. The Spongebob movie. Yeah, that's original. Well, there's just not that much stuff to cover that'd be both funny and original. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, what's that? The Loud House movie. Seriously, how is that more original than any of the other things I just listed? What's the lighthouse? <gasps> a different perspective video. What? Yeah, let's do it. The Loud House is a Nickelodeon animated TV show created in 2016 by Chris... Never mind. Chris who? I said never mind. Anyway, the story is pretty simple. Lincoln Loud is a middle child in a family of 11 siblings, with five younger and older sisters all crammed into a small house. Basically, they just kind of live their life and interact with one another. I'm kind of surprised you haven't seen it, considering the show's pretty popular and well-known on Nickelodeon. I mean, at least it was. Until it wasn't. To put it lightly, after the first few seasons, the whole thing kind of went on a downward tilt. If I could sum up its issues with one statement, the show's simplicity was probably its best attribute. But then the showrunners forgot about that. Well, Mr. Just Stop, being someone who's never seen a single episode of The Loud House before, would you please describe said problem in more detail? I guess if I'm going into any more detail, I'd say anyone who's watched The Loud House in the last few years has probably seen that its focus has completely shifted from the original premise. Now, instead of Lincoln crashing through the crowded halls dodging girls like ping pong balls, he's just kinda... in school with his nobody friends. And the girls aren't off much better, mostly going on separate adventures. The splitting off got so bad that Lincoln's friend Ronnie Ann got her own spin-off show, which is also pretty bad. The point is, the show has mostly lost sight of its roots. So, as a person that's watched the show as it slowly deteriorated, I was a bit skeptical when I heard they were making a movie. Especially considering beforehand, they made an hour-long special that's nothing but bad Canada jokes. But that's for another day. Anyway, what were you thinking it was gonna be like when you decided to watch a YouTube personality LS Mark Lincoln description? Well, I wasn't really thinking anything, considering I was basically forced into watching it, so it's safe to say that going in my expectations were set pretty low. I had heard a lot of mixed things about the Lighthouse show over the years, with some people loving it and some hating it, and after sitting through the movie, I just thought it was incredibly mediocre. Hmm, if that's the case, how about we go into it and talk about how overwhelmingly disappointing it all was? You mean, like we were just about to do? Yes. Well, in that case, why didn't we just start here? Because we need to talk about this goddamn poster. Oh yeah, this wasn't exactly a good omen for what was to come. I mean, obviously. It doesn't look like they gave a single shit when they were composing the entire thing. There's so much empty space and it's just completely barren as far as posters go. This is genuinely one of the worst posters for a movie I have ever seen. Everyone has made the joke, but it literally looks like a fan-made poster you'd find by Lighthouse Fan 2007 on DeviantArt. I think if your show is animated using rigs, it'd be best for you to at least hand-draw the characters on your poster. Most rigged characters look pretty Pretty lifeless when just standing in their base positions. And what do you know, half of these characters are just standing there blankly, not even looking at Lincoln. Like this villain lady, why is she perched off to the side gazing into thin air? What about this lad behind her? What is he even doing? And speaking of Lincoln, while watching the film I had to pause on one specific frame because I was amazed. The poster just fucking ripped a frame of Lincoln from the movie and slapped him onto the king's chair. Ah yeah, that's Lincoln alright. Never seen without his trusty parachute, he wears that all the time. Yeah, if anyone was paid to create this poster, poster there is no god. Look at this dragon. It wasn't even attempted to make this look like it was part of the actual frame. They just took a still and added a drop shadow while it has a completely separate angle of placement. This has got to be the work of some intern that was paid in peanuts so they didn't starve to death that night. It genuinely looks like they knew they weren't going to have to make a cinematic poster, so instead they just gave a big fuck you to everyone that wanted to watch it. And they ate it up. Because the movie is still currently in the top 10 for Netflix movies as we're writing this. Says a lot about society, doesn't it? I mean, it's just a poster. Don't be so quick to judge. Surely it's not representative of the movie's quality, right? Right? You did just watch it, didn't you? Oh yeah. So, you know, go on, get on with it. Oh, I'll get on with it, but only after telling you about this video's sponsor, NordVPN. It's most likely you've heard of this virtual private network for keeping companies from mining your valuable internet data on more than one occasion, and that's for good reason. Its simple interface allows you to pick from 60 different countries that some of the top speeds a VPN can run at from the click of a button. You got problems with speed rate from streaming service? Nord encrypts your traffic to stop that from happening. Plus, it gives you access to services from all over the world. Hell, you can even find discounts in other countries. So if that seems appealing to you, check out my link in the description and you'll get a massive discount on a two-year plan plus four months for free. Thanks to Nord for sponsoring this video. And getting back to what I was saying, I guess the best place to start would be the story. Our main character Lincoln is feeling real down because his sisters are so special and he apparently doesn't have any skills to stand out. So he gets the family to go to Scotland to try and find their relatives from abroad. And in the process, they find out, get this, 
they're Scottish royalty, and they spend the rest of the film just kind of existing there in the town, more specifically their castle, until the obvious villain decides to actually enact her plan and get rid of the loud so she can have some peace and quiet. Well, also dragons and ghosts. Oh uh, yeah, that too. Wait, actually, no, not just that, too. The Loud House isn't a series about supernatural phenomena. At least as far as I know. Maybe they went back in time, fought a couple wizards in the past, saved the future, and spoke to the dead. I haven't checked out the newest season yet. In the context of the rest of the series, though, this is completely stupid and world-breaking. The show was pretty down-to-earth and didn't dive too deep into mythological stuff, but in here, it just feels tacked on to help the plot and make everything feel more quote-unquote movie-esque, and it really doesn't work. Again, I haven't seen the show, so I wouldn't have cared about them straying away from the source material, but these dumb fantasy elements just come off as random plot contrivances more than anything. Why is the dragon there so you can have a big action-packed finale? Why is the ghost girl there so she can easily explain to the characters what happened in the past so they can move the plot along? Nothing here feels natural at all, but this honestly is the least of the story's problems. You're right. For being a Loud House movie, the characters don't really spend that much time in the Loud House. It seems like the writers thought making a movie from a TV show literally meant making the setting bigger, but that takes away a large aspect of why the Loud House worked in the first place. Lincoln had to traverse a small house with a big family of highly varying personalities. That was the shtick, and the best episodes of the series are the ones that play off that basic concept and add on to it with those interactions between characters. Here, with so much room to do whatever the hell they want, the Louds don't really interact that much. Sure, there are a few scenes where they hang out, and they're alright, I guess, but most of it's just unnecessarily long montages of them doing shit and going off on their own small side tangents that go nowhere. This is all in fever of a story that focuses on Lincoln, and how he feels like his sisters are more special than him. And you know what? I'm kinda happy about that. Giving all ten girls something important to do or some kinda arc in a 90 minute runtime would've made this thing a mess, so I appreciate it being more focused is what I would be saying if they didn't abandon the Lincoln stuff anyways. I actually really liked the scene at the beginning where Lincoln gets kicked out of the diner. It felt a little on the nose. You care for his character and care about his feelings, but once they get into Scotland, they just do nothing with it. It becomes about him wanting to be the Duke. He tries to get everyone to act like him, which pisses them off, but within the exact same minute, he has a complete turnaround and is willing to help them out in a meaningful way. It's barely about Lincoln feeling inadequate now, and what it's transformed into is rushed and dumb. It's why I start losing interest once they arrive in Scotland. I would have much rather preferred a more focused character study about Lincoln learning to have some confidence and appreciation for himself. But he already does have confidence, because at the start of the movie, he keeps calling himself the man with the plan. You already know what you're good at, what is the point in any of this? For the predictable moment where all the girls come together to say that they're proud of Lincoln, and they all love him, yada yada yada, I just don't care. It sucks because I would have really liked to see where this could have went, but they did nothing with its potential. That's really the word, isn't it? potential. This movie had so much potential for what could have been done with it that they just didn't. It lacks any sort of focus whatsoever by the halfway point and takes the villain finally deciding to get off her ass and do something for the plot to even pick back up again. Everything in this movie is so intent on being cinematic that they don't even take the time to give a reason for why it needs to be that way. Like I said before, the Loud House is a simple concept. Most simple concepts don't need an extravagant plot or setting for it to work in movie form. Now, I might be in the minority on this, but I do actually like Hey Arnold the movie. It does the same plot as like five different episodes from the TV show, but if there's one thing you can take away from it, it's that the crew knew what worked best, and understood the setting and cast were some of the most integral factors. You could have set a Loud House movie in the generic town they live in, and it would have worked just fine because the characters are what drive the series, and for them to interact better, the small Loud House could be seen as a necessity. But I've already gone on about that, and maybe the new characters have something to offer the world that makes it interesting. I mean, the villain was... Yeah... Yeah. The big villain of the movie is one of the caretakers at the castle, but with the lights no longer there, she pretty much got it all to herself. But oh no, now that they've returned, it means she actually has to do her job. And so she sets out in her goal to get rid of the louds. She doesn't really have a definite plan for this at first, it's just kept as broad as getting rid of the louds. It takes like 50 minutes to actually get to the part where it's revealed she knows about this staff that can control dragons for some reason. They try to justify this by her not being too outwardly mad at first because they were only staying for a week. But because of this, it means the plot just sort of meanders for a while, until a predictable moment where the Lloyds decide to permanently move to Scotland. Yeah, I couldn't see that coming. Yeah, and beyond that, her entire plan to get rid of the Louds makes pretty much no logical sense. Okay, so we've got to accept in this movie that the mostly grounded Loud House universe has both ghosts, 
and dragons. But if we're gonna go off that, how about we talk about the villain's great ancestor that drove away the original Louds from Scotland. She drove them away using the dragon of that time and got the crown from the Lincoln lookalike, and then she just kind of existed after that, I guess. I bring this up because the current villain decides that to make sure the Louds never come back, she needs to become the Duchess with the authority of the crown to keep them away. And I'm just left wondering, why the fuck didn't the ancestor do that like 400 fucking years ago? In her entire musical number explaining this plan, there are several parallels to her and her ancestor, singing about how she's finishing the ancestor's plan. But if it's the same plan, why didn't the ancestor do it in the first place? Also, when the Lincoln lookalike has to give up the crown, one of the sisters mentions that the dragon will take the crown from the duke if they see him as unworthy. So if the current villain was going to pull off a similar plan, why didn't she use the dragon to make Lincoln give up the crown based on this old law now that it's established in the story, and I don't know, make the dragon crown her so no one can go against it? She has control of the dragon, and the ancestor used the staff to do the exact same thing taking away the crown. So wouldn't the townspeople know what that meant if she did it again? It's not like she wouldn't know since she has the journal, but instead, she decides to use the staff to make Lincoln embarrass himself with the dragon so the townspeople don't like him anymore? Even though it's obviously not his fault for the dragon crashing into shit. Yeah, and what's with their plan randomly shifting halfway through? At first her goal was just to get rid of the lights so she could have some peace and quiet. Why did they then need to turn her into some mustache twirling villain who now wants to be the ruler of all the land, despite this motivation switching after the townsfolk were already abandoning the island. Yeah, sure is great that she now gets to rule over all this… nothing. They could have easily come up with a different dumb excuse of her being so deranged and mad with power that she now wants the entire town empty so she can have permanent silence and nobody can bother her, but I guess that would have made a little too much sense, wouldn't it? That's true. What's even the point of having the crown after the Louds are gone? She wasn't really in search of power to begin with. She was just chilling in the bath. There was no reason that after the Louds were gone, she needed to be the Duchess because she had a goddamn dragon. Any Louds that might come back in her lifetime could easily be scared off by the dragon. Her wanting to take the throne is entirely just to move the plot along a little bit further, as when she tries to get the crown, the groundskeeper exposes the fact that the Louds never said they would give it to her. If she hadn't asked for the power she didn't need to to keep the Louds away, the entire third act wouldn't have happened. And like you said, her entire motivation seems to shift on a dime to now caring so much about the crown when it isn't even valuable anymore. She's a woman in a castle with a dragon. She doesn't need the fucking crown. Yet the entire reason throughout her next encounter with the Louds she pussyfoots around obliterating them is because they get a hold of the crown, which holds no power anymore. Who gives a shit about a now meaningless piece of jewelry? Just kill them and move on with your day. This new motivation that seems to only pop up for plot convenience is only added for that exact reason. It doesn't match her prior motivations, nor does it make any sense whatsoever. And I know I keep saying stuff doesn't make sense in this movie, but that's just because it doesn't. Don't blame me for this film's shitty, inconsistent elements. Oh, we're talking about the animation now? I mean, yeah, if you want. I think when you have a movie based off a cartoon, even if not released in theaters, you expect some type of upgrade in regards to the animation. Hell, even if this film were on par with the show, I'd give it a pass. But it somehow manages to look even worse in areas. Credit where credit is due. I think the storyboard and composition here is great. Lighthouse is really good when it comes to character posing. Reminds me a lot of the Fairly Odd Parents in the ways that characters will quickly shift from exaggerated positions. But while the regular studio was busy working on season 5, they had to outsource the movie to a brand new studio who had never worked on the Lighthouse before. Sure, give such an ambitious project to people with no experience working on the show in its style, that'll go over well. And it does really show just how clueless they were when it came to the style of the film. Some shots in this actually look pretty good, and like they could be shown in a theater. This one scene in the beginning with Lincoln in his room showing Lily slides has some really nice lighting effects, and there are some similar shots throughout the film. But for the most part, it just doesn't look like the studio knew where to put the budget other than these wraparound shots throughout the movie. And even then, the wraparounds have their share of problems, such as randomly repositioning characters and not creating full 3D models for them in these shots. So if you look closely, you can just sort of see them shift suddenly from one pose to the next. Just in general, it's all really jittery, and it doesn't help that the film has almost no shading. That's like the baseline for making a feature film version of a 2D animated show. If you can't pass that hurdle, I fail to see how you can do perspective. I mean, just look at some of these shots that zoom out and look at characters doing shit in the background. It looks like they're tacked on rather than actually being part of the scene, and they barely move. A radical departure from the show, which was basically all about movement. Not to mention the weird consistent trait of the characters going off model, which I thought wasn't even something that could happen since it's animated using rigs for the most part, but I guess this film was 
was able to prove me wrong. And you know, I think the reason for all this inconsistency could partially have to do with its production history. Oh really? What happened with the production of the film? Surely it couldn't be that bad. Oh. But then it was. This movie was originally announced back in 2017 for a February 2020 release date in theaters. But as the production got further along, the plan shifted. Sure, you could potentially blame the demonetization virus for why the film traded hands to be a Netflix original, but unfortunately for those people, the announcement for it being on Netflix was back in 2019. Now, am I saying that all bad movies which people don't consider good enough for theaters are put on Netflix to cut the studio's losses? No, not at all. Films like Wish Dragon and Klaus show the potential for streaming service original movies just as much as any theatrical film. But with the Loud House cases specifically, I do think it was a decision made from lack of faith. Put yourself in the studio head's shoes right now. This movie was announced when the Loud House was reaching a peak in popularity, but by 2019, the show's ratings have gone way down alongside the decline of network television. The Loud House might be popular, but it's not nearly as recognizable a brand as something like Spongebob that can just release a movie on its own and be fine. For people to care about a movie about something like the Loud House, viewers need something to get excited for, and this just doesn't bring anything special to the table. It's bland, milk toast, easily forgettable, nonsensical background noise that unconsciously plays because of autoplay on Netflix. It's not something you'd actively watch in a movie theater for $15. Therefore, I think that, based on the plot and assets done so far, the studio had a change of heart over the film midway through production and slashed its budget for a Netflix release to make sure they didn't have an inevitable flop on their hands at the box office. I'm sure in an alternate reality, the film might look better with time and money put into it for a truly theatrical looking production, but what would be the point? Putting sprinkles on tofu isn't going to make it any less bland to taste. It's a sad reality, but the film really got what it deserved if my theory is correct. Damn. Maybe it's a good thing this film never hit theaters. Went through such a troubled production that it was inevitable to end up the way it was. And you also have to think about how the crew of this show is split between the next season of the series and a movie most of the time, leading to a lot of input from a ton of different people, making it harder for the main vision to shine through from all of the different takes. And you can completely feel that in this movie. There's no clear focus for most of the film. Having random bits of it supposedly being more important than others, but getting too little focus to actually care about. And that fits the same with the characters. It reminds me a lot of Phantom Planet, the Danny Phantom movie, and that the film doesn't seem to know what it wants to be, and in trying to do too much, it ends up doing nothing at the same time. Really, it's so stupidly sad, since the film would probably have worked better with less division among the story's focus. Yeah, that's ultimately the biggest issue. Even if you'd want to argue that a film based on a TV show should be primarily made for fans of the show, I still think there's gotta be some kind of reach to a general audience to bring them in. And I gotta say, this has not convinced me to check out The Lighthouse. Could it be a good show? Probably. But I don't care because this film gives me no reason to care about any of these characters. And to me, that's ultimately its biggest failure. Well, despite having different perspectives in relation to what we know about the show, it looks like we just came to the same conclusion, which might just speak volumes about the actual quality of what we just watched. Maybe people who still like the show will find this good, I have no idea, I'm not in that fandom, but as a person that has liked and laughed at the show before in its earlier seasons, this does really disappoint me. And as a person that hasn't watched the series and doesn't plan to after this is over, I feel the exact same way. With that all said and done, what are your thoughts on the Loud House movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave your thoughts down below, and maybe you can open our eyes to the true inner beauty of this film. See you all in the next video, and have a good day. Oh, what's that? Huh. Looks like they updated the poster. It's gotta be better than... Fuck, Fuck this movie. movie. Okay, so do you think everyone's gonna be pissed just like they were last time? I don't know, it's hard to say. I think we did a much better job in this case being fair to the whole thing, so yeah, I think we'll be good. Okay, good, because I don't want any heat in my comment section over this. Get enough of that already, okay? Yeah, I'm sure we're perfectly fine.